Welcome to No Instructions. I'm tired. Hi. <laughs> I'm still Josh, though. <laughs> I'm Bob, and I'm tired. I'm. I, it's weird. I haven't run today. Mm hmm. That'll give you the nice spurt of energy that you require. Well, it's become a habit. Physical exhaustion. And I didn't do it this morning because I was going to do it this afternoon. And then I was up in the attic doing stuff just a little while ago, like standing on the joists mm -hmm. and like balancing myself between two 24 inch things, trying not to fall and screwing things together and doing wiring at the same time. And now my legs are tired, but I still have to run five miles today after we do the podcast. Did you fall though? I did not fall. Good job. Which is good because I would have fallen through the ceiling of my ki kitchen. Yeah, it would have just been like part of your kitchen remodel. You could have added one of those like skylight tubes. Oh, there you go. It was intentional. Yeah. Well, how's it going? It's going good. How are you, other than being tired? Other how's than, stuff going? Other than being tired, uh, I'm good. Good. I got the R2-D2, the new Lego R2-D2 set. You sure did. <laughs> that, was a, that was a weird smile through your yeah, teeth. Yeah, well, it was good. Not it's like <laughs> around here What last week, which is like, oh, there's a box outside and in it. I'm like, oh, I wonder which new set of Star Wars Legos this is. Because <laughs> you got them all. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm very happy for you. Uh -huh. yeah, In the most like jealous, it. like, friend kind of way, I'm happy for you. Well, it, you know, like, there have been several R2-D2 sets, and they're all mm -hmm. very similar. Apparently, I saw a comparison picture of, like, I think the previous one. And it was pretty close to what the one that just came out. But I've never gotten one of them. And I figured... I didn't like the previous one. It looked very technic and yeah. skeletal it, it didn't right. look i mean lego pieces especially at that scale the, a scale that of r2 dj that you really want to have um you can add different pieces to make those compound curves but like to make a gigantic circle in lego is not easy mm -mm. so i i can easily see why they were hesitant to doing it yeah and i mean I, I think you know they've done a few models like that over time where they've reintroduced it and it's just been better you yeah know, i don't know if their model their habits get better or like the best practices for designers get better or whatever. But this one looks pretty good. The head, um, I haven't made it yet. It's still in the box. But the head looks similar to the BB-8 mm. where it's like a dome, but they make it out of like four, four slices yeah. with a tower in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks similar to that, but the body does look a little more rounded. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about it. Got a little feedback from people uh, when I was asking about talking about Legos and stuff on a on videos or whatever some people are interested oh about making the lego channel yeah Ooh. yeah so I, don't, I don't know if i'll ever actually do that or not just mm. another thing to do but did we talk about the lego space shuttle uh, that i got before i, I went on vacation yeah yeah, yeah. okay so. that's my, I don't know if we my about new here. favorite lego set yeah it is fantastic whole thing the saturn 5 rocket was cool because i dig the saturn 5 rocket and so there's like, Nostalgia with Lego, <clears throat> Nostalgia with Rocket kind of came together. But the set itself is really straightforward. Um, the Lunar Lander was cool because it was more complex of, yeah. of, you know, an engineering challenge. To where the rocket, or you could break it apart into three sections. It was cool, but it's you're building a cylinder right. over and over and over again. Yeah. The Space Shuttle was awesome. Space Shuttle had complicated, um, like, mechanisms. It had new pieces that Lego made specifically for the space shuttle. Uh, it was all around fantastic, and it's my new favorite set. Hmm. That was one of those when it, when they announced it. I looked at it on the site, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a, a new Lego set. I should probably buy that." And I kind of looked at it. And was like, "It's cool, but like, it's not. You know, if it wasn't new, if it if I had the option between that one and another one, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have been that interested. Not because it's not cool. It just didn't grab my attention the same." So that was one that I didn't buy that was new. That's how I felt about R2. Yeah. Which is funny because I love R2-D2. But I 3D printed the R2-D2, which I think is about the same scale. And I painted it up yeah. how I wanted it. And so I have my representation. It's not a you know, screen accurate R2-D2 yeah, yeah, yeah. color palette. Did you come up with your own numbers for it? I did. Do you want to say what they are? I don't really remember. Okay. I think it was... So my R2 unit... I imagined that in, say, 10 years in the future, if the job I had in the Army was allowed to have an R2 unit. Hmm. So it was like an aviation support, a piece of support equipment that didn't have as much personality. So it would, like, help you carry your right. tools. It would, like, service hydraulic systems. So, like, that's where I went into. It was a, it was a piece of support equipment for my old job. 
And so mine is like it has a an army aircraft kind of serial number. So it's not just R two D two. It's R two five four, which Plane was one two. of my old like aircraft tail numbers. And so like I took my own kind of gotcha. artistic liberties with the R two unit. And so while I would love to have a, you know an R two sitting next to my R two, the Lego one doesn't look like yeah. R two D two. Right. It looks like a Lego version of R2D. And that was kind of my critique with the previous iteration. Is I was like, oh, that's that's a good try. But yeah. I want R2D2. Right. Yeah. And so I can't have a space shuttle. So I had to make concessions <laughs> <laughs> with a Lego space shuttle. Says who? Yeah. Not with an attitude like that, Josh. That's right. I gotta try harder. Hmm. Well, yeah, I'd like to see the, the space shuttle. That would be point, ooh. But... The producers of National Treasure three, if that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to steal the space shuttle. That was my Nick Cage voice. That was pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> um, Riley. Well, <laughs> oh. you, you were doing a Nick Cage imitation earlier today for something. Oh, that's right. You? Yeah. Well, we Ghost were, Rider. We were messing with chains, <laughs> and I had this, this big long chain and threw a chain around my chest. I was like, oh, I'm Ghost Rider. <laughs> Which I've never seen that movie. It looked uh, absolutely terrible. Oh, yeah. So I, I didn't watch it. it. So that's why I assumed the whole movie was just him, like, Swing. my head's on fire. <laughs> Swinging Bill. a chain around. Have you shown the kids National Treasure? Yeah. They we, super love it. We haven't done it. I, I keep thinking about it, and then when it comes movie time, I always forget. It feels it's, like that would be a good one for... Like, yeah, the, the history buff in me is like, ugh, come on. But they're really lighthearted fun. I mean, the pacing in the movie is good. It gets people interested in history? Pseudo versions of history? I don't know. <laughs> like, they're not bad movies history with a question mark yeah i mean they're silly and they're ridiculous yeah, yeah. and it's i mean but so is indiana jones what oh i know <laughs> it's a kid's silly version of indiana jones have your kids watched any of the indiana jones movies uh yes my son did my oldest son who's 10 he watched it and then Raiders. i told him yeah yeah i told him to look away when the face melting started but still, I still think that uh, Last Crusade is the best one. That's oh, my favorite. yeah, I agree. Okay. So we watched um, Raiders with them, and we kind of built it up the same way. We're like, at the end, there's a part where, and we went ahead and told them, like, somebody, like, melts. And it looks kind of spooky. So, you know, when you get to that part, I'll tell you, and you can cover your eyes if you don't want to see it. And, our, you know, I mean, our kids are, at the time, our oldest was 12, and the youngest was 6 or 7 or something. And they were all like, oh, no, we're fine. So then when we watched it, they all watched that section the whole time, and they were just, like, laughing. Yeah. Hysterically. It is really they were like, funny that is so scene. weird looking. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, I think we watched the making of that scene before we actually watched the movie. Oh. And I think he just happened to see... I was watching it on YouTube, and he happened to see. He's like, what the heck is this? I was like, oh, this is how they made that guy's face melt in a movie that you've never seen. <laughs> and so he saw the, the prep work, hmm. and then he saw the actual movie. And I think in context, in the... The, the drama of the moment, he wasn't able to remember. Like, oh, that was just like a bunch of paraffin and all this other stuff. He was like, oh, my God, that guy's face is melting off. Yeah. And... Well, we need to watch uh, Last Crusade with him. I think Temple of Doom, like, I, I like Temple of Doom. I don't know, a lot of people dislike it, but... I didn't like it. I, it. I don't like it enough that it's like, kids, this is required watching. Yeah. Whereas the other two, I think. What about the Crystal other Skull? <laughs> there you <laughs> the go. The other two. Exactly. The other so, two are required. Indiana Jones, maybe, like, with... Um, National Treasure. I put Crystal Skull in the same silly nonsense. Like this is, we're just here to have fun. You're not here to like it. <laughs> You're just here to like, oh, this is we're along for a fun ride. But with Indiana Jones, who is clearly trying to not be on a fun ride, he's trying to be Indiana Jones. Like, yeah, I feel like Nicolas Cage doesn't take himself too seriously in those movies, even though he's in great peril. Hmm. He never really acts like he's in great peril. You're just like, oh, Riley! Oh. <laughs> like, that's as much as you get. <laughs> like, I'm holding the Declaration of Independence while people are shooting me with machine guns. I'm just like, oh, elevator button. Boop. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't if he had, like, that much about it. As the, a serious demeanor as Indiana Jones had in National Treasure, I would have went, oh, the main character is taking things way too serious. So this movie must suck because the plot is not living up to the main character's intensity. Oh, right. Yeah. So I think National Treasure, everybody in that movie is on par with what they're doing. They're all agreeing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. 
Well, those are both ones that we need to show the kids. Yeah, we started a movie jar. Did I tell you about the movie jar? Yeah, what, uh, what was your latest movie jar? Oh, man. The latest one. What was the latest one? I don't remember what the latest one was. It wasn't that good. But it was funny. The other day, they got to pick one, and somebody picked it, and everybody, all of them, went, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. One of you put this the movie jar in the has jar. spoken. <laughs> and so they... Since everybody made the noise, I don't remember, one of the kids was just like, okay, well, if everybody agrees, we can just skip this one. And everybody went, yeah. I'm like, somebody put it in the jar. <laughs> There's someone like, yeah, that, that movie's terrible. Yeah, that's so dumb. Aww. Who would want to watch a baby movie like that? When I worked at Lockheed, we I had a thing where uh, we only had a half hour lunch break because of the like very secure area that we worked in. You couldn't leave. And... I was the professional development coordinator and I was like, yo, this is dumb. Why can't we all just go out to lunch as a group and like do something other than being in this one room? And some people were okay with it. And, uh, but trying to get the, what, 10 people or whatever that worked in there all to agree on the same restaurant was almost impossible. Hmm. And we lived in like the southernest corner of Georgia and there wasn't a whole lot to eat anyway. So we, I, I created this uh, Excel program that would randomize all of the restaurants <laughs> yeah. that were available on Yelp. And when I click the button, like that answer is that's, that's where we're going. I don't care if you don't like it. It'll be a funny story. If everybody hates it, it'll even be a funny er story. Mm. So I sent around an email and I'm like, if everybody can agree on a restaurant in town that is terrible unanimously, I will remove it from the pool. And if not, you get what you get. Yeah. If it says Applebee's, then shut up. We're going to Applebee's. <laughs> so we've been watching, um, 30 rock. We just, mm -hmm. we just finished it. Like, a couple nights ago. And one of the last episodes, I guess it might even be the last episode, in the office, they had a thing where they would take turns picking lunch. Oh, yeah. You know? And the last episode, this guy Lutz, who everybody Lutz. hates, is just like, Blimpies. Yeah, we're going to Blimpies. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. So they spend the entire episode trying to outwit him and figure out a way around. Going, it's You got to see it. But Have you ever been to Blimpies? that show is so good. Uh, I think I went one time in Savannah, like maybe in college or something. And it was just like a... I don't know. It's like all the other sub shops, right? The time, first time I went to Blim uh, the only time, there was, of the sandwich shops available in the time, there was Subway Reign Supreme, Blimpies was a thing, there was uh, Quiznos. Sh Quiznos. Uh, yep. Schlotzky's was a thing. Oh, man. I like Schlotzky's. Um, that was good. Schlotzky's? Schlotzky's. I don't even know how to pronounce it. But, like, there weren't that many. Yeah. Uh, but I remember going to Blimpy and going, this is absolutely terrible. How oh, do really? you mess up a sandwich? But now I go to Subway, and that's the same reaction I have. I'm like, you have descended into blimpy territory where your sandwich is just terrible. Yeah. It's bread and meat and lettuce and stuff. Like, how can this be a bad thing? So in Savannah, there was a blimpy right next to this place called the Soda Pop Shop, I think was the name of it. And it was just like a little tiny deli, but not a deli. When you think of a deli, you think of, like, interesting deli sandwiches. Mm -hmm. This was a deli that was like... We're going to make the sandwich that your mom would make for lunch on an afternoon. <laughs> it's just a sandwich on white bread with meat on it and like some other stuff. So it sounds bad, but it was actually just like a place you would go and you'd get a good sandwich. They had this sandwich, and this is when I learned a simple but wonderful thing. It was a club sandwich, two pieces of white bread, normal club toppings. Mm -hmm. But they would cover it, before they put the last piece of bread on, they would put a layer of Italian dressing. Hmm. Excellent. So weird that that works on a sandwich, but man, it was so good. A little baking and bacon, Italian dressing on top of it, very good. So we started doing that at home for a long time. We haven't done it in a while, but the um, so sandwich. We would, anyway, we would always go there because it was right next to Blumpy, and we we're like, well, we could go to the you know, yeah. So. The sandwich shop we had in our town was called Gifts. Gifts. It was actually <laughs> called Gifts, and it was with a G. It was G I F. Yes, it was called Gift Subs. I yeah. think they went out of business. The end. Oh. But their sandwiches were very simple. They had really good bread, and they would butter the bread. Every single mm. sandwich had buttered bread on it. And so a simple sandwich, like, was elevated. Hmm. And I thought it was some weird, like, oh, God, you people, with your cholesterol, you can't just, like, have a sandwich. you got to put butter all over it. And then I went to Paris, and they're like, yeah, you put butter on a sandwich. You want a, a, a jambon beurre, it's a piece of French bread, butter, and ham, and it's delicious, and you're going to love it. Hmm. I'm like, oh, well, this is real... It's sophisticated so in its European. simpleness. <laughs> and, and I was <laughs> like throwing shade at my super country, like just sandwich shop. So I, I mentally apologized to gift subs. And they probably went out of business yeah. because of my That's lack of right. endorsement. 
Man. Well. What are we going to do with all this butter we've got now? We're out of business. Um, so you, I was sure. talking about 30 Rock, and earlier you had talked about some TV show discussion that we had had offline. Yeah, we haven't had just like a TV show. Type. We've talked yeah. a lot about Marvel, and we've talked about like, I don't even think we even talked about the wrap-up of the Winter Soldier. But we'll get to that, hmm. maybe, if anybody cares. Um, <laughs> but while I was on vacation, I got a message from Anthony. We all got a message from Anthony on our internal employee Slack channel. That was very dramatic and it worried me. Yeah, I thought something because I saw it on my phone on my watch, just the headline, and I'm like, he was oh like, no, is something guys? Wrong here? There's been something I I need to confess to you. It's been weighing on me for a really long time, and then just like a long pause. Like, oh, I was great. like, he's been oh embezzling my money. God, what is wrong now? <laughs> <laughs> and it, finally, it came back. I think Parks and Rec is better than The Office. <laughs> And then I laughed to myself. Anyway, there I said it. It needed to be said. <laughs> and I, after I, like, giggled to myself, I looked over at my wife, and I'm like, well, now I have to have this conversation. Is he right? I need to be able to back this up with supporting facts. Because he didn't support his argument at all. He just said a thing and then, like, dropped a match and walked away. Yeah, and I immediately agreed with him, just for the record. So I, I thought a lot about this. Because I think most people on here know that, like, I absolutely love The Office. I'm a diehard Office fan. And I had to come to grips with, like, if this... I, I, I place it like a boxing match. There's not a knockout by any means, I don't think. No, 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 no. Well, like, at the end, if it goes to the judges, what does the card say? Hmm. And I came to the conclusion that I think Parks and Rec would have won that fight. But that's only... I don't want to say that's only. No, because it's it's more complex than that. So why do you think? Support your, your claim. Well, with I mean, I've said, I've always said, and we, you know, you guys have talked about The Office a lot, and I've always said that it, it was funny when I watched it, but I have really no interest in going back to watch it because the uncomfortable comedy thing is not my thing. It was funny. Yeah. But, like, I don't want to live there. I don't How wanna cringy sp- the yeah, show like, is on purpose. Like, I get it, but I don't really want to spend my time there. I'd much rather spend my time on something that was just fun and lighthearted and you know yeah that's just not my thing that not that doesn't make it a bad show just between those two that's why parks and rec is full of heart and really funny and so it just is a little more me i think so i think if we were to again to like grade this on some sheet rewatchability, you give the check to parks over the office yeah okay oh, yeah Ooh, i don't know where i put that one and it sucks now because you have to get Peacock, the NBC app, to be able to watch it because they pulled both of those shows from all the other ancillary mm-hmm. streaming services. Uh, but when I gave my son that iPod... And you can't get that on the Fire TV, by the way? You they can't. have Peacock? You can get it on my the... Mouse, by the way. Um, what's Google's, Google's thing? Co- uh, Chromecast. Chromecast. You can get it on Chromecast, and I think you can get it on Apple TV+. Google Plus, Cast. The newest version of Apple TV+. Plus. But anyway, so my son has the the iPod that has like five or six episodes of the office. And when we dropped them off at their grandparents house, while we went to St. Thomas, I guess he just hung out and like watched all those office and office episodes and memorized them. So when we went to Disney on our last day of vacation, my wife drove, I was in the passenger seat and our oldest son was in the back and he was just, we were quoting the office back and forth to each other. The one where Dwight was, uh, where Michael was going to steal Dwight's biggest client. And he did like spin move. He did that whole thing. My son recited that entire scene and it was hilarious. And my wife couldn't stop laughing because she's like, you guys are two big nerds and you're geeking out over the same things. And <laughs> so like that made me love that show and think about it more. Hmm. And then the office ladies is a super fun podcast where they go episode by episode and they talk a little bit more about it. And that's who Angela that's Jenna and- Fisher and Angela. Uh, Kinsey, okay. who played Angela and Pam on the show. Gotcha. I don't think that there is that kind of additional support or like additional commentary from people on Parks. No, probably not. I think it would be very fun, but I think for supporting stuff like there's an Office board game and like there's more ways to enjoy the Office outside of just watching the show than there is for Parks. But rewatchability, like there's certain episodes of Parks and Rec that I will watch the entire way through that I think are absolute gold 
that will make me laugh nonstop. And I have the same thing with The Office. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if like one has more than the other. But with Parks, I could watch straight through beginning to the absolute season finale and be satisfied. To where in The Office... Right. I will watch through to a certain point, and then it goes off a cliff. Hmm. So it gets my Parks and Rec gets my check because of rewatchability. I can binge that entire series and be happy. Now, do you feel like it came back? Because I know there was a point I like vaguely remember that when it kind of started jumping the shark a little bit or whatever. And do you think there's a point where it came back or the was Office? It just, yeah, or was it just kind of um, downhill after that? We watched The Office on New Year's. Because it was going away. And I was like, oh, I need to pick my favorite episodes. And I went to certain seasons. And then I skipped an entire chunk of that show and did not care. Like, in my mind, it didn't even happen. I went to Hmm. the end. Like, the very last episode, or maybe the one before that. But the very last episode, it was awesome. The season or two before then, I could completely let that go and give Hmm. away. To whereas Parks doesn't have that. Yeah. Parks catches my attention. Just as funny the entire way through. I think both of them may have rocky first seasons like most shows do, which I think is forgivable in this metric. But for rewatchability, consistency, that kind of thing, Parks won. I agree. Yeah. So we watched, uh, rewatched Parks a while back, and then we just, we watched, let's see, after that, Ted Lasso. That's a good show. Shit's Creek. That was also a good show. Yeah. I liked that show more than I thought I was going I to. I did not think I was going to like it. After the first two, I was like, I, this is not my thing. But we ended up really enjoying it. Uh, Ted Lasso was fantastic. Then we did 30 Rock. I think those are the the kind of more recent comedies that we've been through over the last year or so or whatever. But now we're trying to decide what's next. And I think we might do New Girl. Okay, it's been so a while since we it, watched New Girl. With this conversation... When we, it was determined within the I Like to Make Stuff crew that Parks, on paper, was better than The Office. Again, on paper, you can come at me with your supporting Well, e- at this point out that you don't, one doesn't have to exactly. be better than the other. Yes, I mean, one is not like, knocking one out. They're not yeah. retiring just because they lost this fight. Um, but I responded with, where does New Girl fall into this? Because on rewatchability... New Girl doesn't have, in my opinion, like the bumpy first season. They had a bumpy first couple episodes where there was like, is Coach or is it uh, Winston? Like, we don't really know. But they ironed that out, I think, pretty quickly. Yeah. New Girl is an awesome show. If you don't know what we're talking about, you should should absolutely watch it. It's hilarious. Zoe Deschamel, the lead character, a couple other characters on there. It's funny. But I will easily watch New Girl any day of the week. Yeah. It is. It is very fantastic. Oops, I messed up. Um, it's been it's been long enough since we've seen it. I mean, we watched it when it was on, and I haven't seen it since then. So it's been long enough that I don't think I can compare it. You know, it's just not present on my mind. Whereas we watched a little more of the other stuff, I guess, more recently. So but I do remember loving it and really looking forward to it. Um, just some of it is so hilarious and bizarre. Yep. Uh, New Girl is a series that, that on Parks and on The Office, I have my favorites. I have the ones where I, I'm like, this whole episode is funny. Or it has funny parts that you remember and has like the one-liners. On New Girl, all of the episodes are consistently funny throughout. And it has one-liners. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not, I look forward to the highlight or these handful that had me going the whole way. New Girl just is consistent across the board. Like, it's funny the whole way with four different reasons. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I, I super love New Girl. Ah, and um, if New Girl were to fight it out with Parks, I would say, in my opinion, New Girl would win. Really? Yeah. Wow. I love Parks and Rec. But it's weird. To, like, Anthony said they don't compare. And I think the mockumentary office and... Um, New Girl, or not New, I'm sorry, Office and Parks and maybe even Modern Family in that because it has some elements of mockumentary. Like, that format was very unique. Oh, man. That's all right. Where'd it go? I don't need it. I like The Office because it seemed real. And it seemed funny because it was real. Parks and Rec seemed like caricatures that could be put in real situations. 
and the new girl seemed like a little bit of both. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then Modern Family, which we've started watching now, is really fun. And whether they're in a mockumentary style, it doesn't really need to be because they're not in a documentary like The Office was. Like, it's a fun show, too. I forgot how much I like that show. Hmm. That's not one I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen this. Ah, I, keep I, th- I really these think that you off. would like it. It's it's kind-hearted. Um, it's fun. There's a, a range of characters that are on the show and how they interact with each other. Hmm. I think you'd like it. I mean, I've heard good things. It just I don't I don't remember why we never even gave it a try. We watch um, like currently things that are on. We only watch Goldbergs, which has kind of fallen away i mean over the last is it still on it's still on it's just not as it's very formulaic and so there's moments in it that are really really funny but as a a thing that is consistently funny it's become a lot of repeated jokes and stuff Mm. and it's you know but it does have some sweet kind of family moments to it as well all right i had to take apart this corner because i put all the pieces facing the wrong direction now so do you have a favorite episode of parks and rec Ooh. Um, if you if we had the library, if somebody if we bought Peacock and there was a TV right there, and it was like we're gonna watch an episode of Parks, which one are you gonna turn to? Oh man, I don't know him well enough. I don't think. I remember the one when Ben got drunk. That's like the, on the blue one. Bubba. Yeah, the Bubba Booey one. Oh, that one. That was the the snake juice one. Yeah. That's, that was a really funny one. It just sticks out of my mind. I don't know if that's like the Snake, funniest. Is that what it's called? Snake juice? Snake juice, yeah. Snake juice, that was a funny one. I keep knocking these pieces off of my face. So I think, yeah, like, okay, maybe not particular episodes, but when Ben gets drunk on that show, it is very funny. It is hilarious. He got drunk on the blue wine. Which is like, yeah. It was like, it was like a dirty. him and Ron buddy episode. Like, that was, that was some comic gold. Oh, yeah. It's such a good show. <laughs> now I kind of want to go watch it again. My favorite Parks episode is when the guys came from uh, Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. love that one so much. Fred Armisen is hilarious. There it is, Sister City. Yeah. It's in, what, season two, episode five. That is... You that go is to jail. Movie. You go straight to jail. <laughs> My country? <laughs> it's like oil is like food for cars? I love that episode. It's but, like, good. I think with Parks, like, I'm looking at this, like, everybody is an amped up version of like a potential real person, which is good for a TV mm. show. Yeah. Like it's, it's funny. Like Andy is like, there's dim witted people that, you know, but like Andy is a, turned up to 11. Like everybody is where on the office, everybody is real except for Michael. And someone told me one time that if you think about the office as, as an actual real world documentary of a boring paper company, except the producers told Michael that this is his, uh, his audition reel for Hollywood movies. <laughs> okay. And then it changes the whole thing. Oh, yeah. They're like, it justifies why he acts that way. They're like, it's his comedy reel. But no one else knows that. Hmm. And so whenever he left, the whole show felt flat. Yeah. Because there was no one else trying to have that same kind of insider knowledge. And then they were, like, trying to introduce new people. To kind of fill that role, I don't know. I didn't. It, it hit a wall, but that's where the office, like in its subtlety, I love subtle humor, and both of those shows have it in droves. Uh, I think New Girl has it in a lot of like facial expressions and like reactions to things. Like I think that's where, in my opinion, the comedy is in that show. It's they put themselves in funny situations, but like the character interactions of that group. Yeah. The chemistry between them all sells that show to me. Well, that and there's like Winston is Mr. Winston's <laughs> is unapologetically bizarre and he's never explained. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's just there's a bunch of stuff about that show that they never explain and that's it's kind of cool. Like they're uh what's the the Great American? What's the name of the, the oh, game yeah. they play? Yeah, the Great American. They have this True game, American. True American. They have this game that they play several times throughout the series, and it's like a drinking game, but it's also the something The floor around, is lava. The floor is lava. And, and they, it has American trivia. And so they never explain how the game works in the show, but it's just always these clips of them doing bizarre stuff, and it's always like, yeah, we're playing True American. And, and it's they always never like, explain it. it. It's good. 
they always have a, a random person coming into their apartment and then they play a true American and the random person's like, what? Hold on. What are we yeah. doing? I don't understand. And they're like, come on, you'll get it. You'll get it. Just and then in like two scenes from now, they're having the, like the most fun of yeah. their entire life. Like they magically caught on. And I think some fans have actually made rules to that game. <laughs> really? Yeah. I saw it somewhere. I didn't wow. read them all. So let's take a little diversion here. Look at this. Lego. Oh, we're going to go in deep on, on a piece of Lego. Um, and if you're listening to the audio podcast, tough. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say here. Tough I just nuggets. found this big. Um, Do you say tough nuggets or tough nuggies? I said tough nuggets, but I've tough nuggies is also a, okay. an accepted yeah. response. Anyway, all right. So if you're looking at the screen, look at this this big board. This is just a plate, nothing special from this side, right? But it caught my attention because the back of it has a weird pattern on it that is not on other plates. Most plates look like this with just the grid of holes. This one has weird little lines and two big dot, like there's like a big X. I don't, you can't really see it in the video. Anyway, there's something different about this piece and I don't know why. You see the big X across mm -hmm. it? I think that's a that's a visual illusion. No, 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 it's raised. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, I mean, Interesting. Not, not here, but down in there. Anyway, okay. can we proceed? Pause real quick. I have to pee super duper bad. <laughs> I did not do that before we started, and it's yes. making me shake. I'll Go. be right back. Okay. okay. So what about community? Ooh. Because you guys both got me onto community, which was mm -hmm. a good show, mm -hmm. I think, up to a certain point. Yeah. Right? But how does community factor in if this were a bracket? And so right now it was the office versus parks, which I think should happen much later in that fight. But if parks beat it out, in my opinion, I think New Girl beat parks. Mm. Where does community fall in this? Hmm. I mean, this is going to sound like I really don't like The Office, and that's not the truth. It's just I don't like it like the way other people like it. I get that. Some people I, just don't like it. I think it's boring to them. And and to, I'll go ahead and say this, and you can hate me all you want to. The British Office, terrible. Mm -hmm. No interest whatsoever. Not my thing. Um, for me, community is still a little above The Office. And okay. I think that's because of the zaniness the, like, hmm. not trying to recreate reality, which I feel like The Office, you know, is, like you yeah. were saying, it's kind of documentary style. It's, it's intentionally, like, grounded. Could actually happen, even though it, the characters are ridiculous. But the things that happen could actually happen. But in Community, there's certain episodes, there's levels of just, like, this would never, ever, ever happen in real life. Ever. But it's still hilarious. Yeah. I think I like that, you know. So, for me, it's it's right there above... The Office. I I would put it as the shows we've talked about so far. The ones we've actually talked about. The Office, Parks, New Girl. I would put it below all of those. Mm. Because I think it took me... The, the main characters in the show, I actually don't like on the show. I wish they weren't on the show. No, not the, I would say the main characters. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all around a table. Um, what's his name? Uh, Joel know. McHale's character. Hmm. Joel McHale's character, and then the blonde girl on the show, which I think that they took her character in many weird directions. Yeah. I actually didn't like them on the show. I wish that they were not there. They could have had a Troy and Abed show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they should have been the main... But maybe yep. they wouldn't have been as interesting if they were the main, you know? There's part of me that, like, I, I agreed with why Chevy Chase was on that show, but he hated that he was that person on the show. Hmm. I was like, oh, that was the only reason I literally cared about you on that show was because you, you kind of fit that bill and you played the character well. And then whether he liked to or not, I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I thought it was really fun. I think the D&D &D episodes of that show, the first one, was awesome. I think that the freedom that they had to go in a bunch of different, uh, like, stylistic directions. They have, like a, like, a claymation show. Like, that was super brave and super cool. Yeah. I always liked it when... Like, uh, ooh, now we got to add another show in here. <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> so when they could take a show, when they would have a different director and just wanted to go a complete different artistic way, which I think is a fun departure. Yeah. Some shows did it well. Some shows might not have done it well. Like when ER went live one time, like, I, I didn't really like it that much. It seemed odd. Hmm. So. Didn't see it. Yeah. What about what Scrubs? About did you watch Scrubs? I, I watched some. I did not watch it the way that I would watch a show now that I really enjoyed because I think I was in college at the time. 
Um, I did really like it. I thought it was very funny, but I, I didn't watch it, you know, on a regular basis or anything. Oh, I did this wrong. What do you think about Scrubs? I love Scrubs. I thought that show was hilarious. Um, when at the end, whenever they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna teach in a medical school," it it lost it all. Okay, well, let's if we're talking about older shows, let's go even further back. Okay, I'm just gonna give me some initial reactions to these classic comedies, like just whether you liked them or not. Friends. Um, I like Friends, but it was more like our family is gonna sit around and watch Friends. Hmm. Because when Friends came to Netflix, my wife got really excited, and she wanted to watch all the episodes, and I didn't. But, I mean, I could sit down and watch some of them. But I was not as excited about Friends as everybody else. Yeah. Our friends, uh, <laughs> our friends uh, Megan and Chris, love Friends. Yeah. And, like, have seen it all many, 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 many times, and we'll just talk about it many, 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 you know. They love it, love it, love it. And so Jenny was like, yeah, we should... Watch Friends again, because they really like it, and it'll be good. And I think we watched one episode, and I was just like, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, it's just not... We would not be friends, Chandler. I, I just don't want to be around these people, you know? And the same thing for um, a lot of people talk about How I Met Your Mother. Like, it's so good. so funny. We watched one episode, and like, nope, can't do it. That I think that show needs to be in this conversation, too. Um, and I'm not... People, told people us that, that like that show, or like those types of shows, rock on. That I'm not trying to dog on the show... It just, if I'm going to spend my time watching TV, it's got to be stuff that really, like, draws me in. Yeah. So. How I Met Your Mother was was okay. It seemed uh, one note to me. Hmm. Like, Neil Patrick Harris, like, Barney's character was Barney's character. He acted the same. There was nothing really surprising about his character. The guy Ted, I guess the main character, I couldn't stand that guy's character. He seemed whiny and just annoyed in general and just... I don't know. I liked... Um, Jason Siegel in that show. I like Jason Siegel. I think he's a funny guy. So I watched that show for Jason Siegel and then the other people who they were really trying to get me to enjoy, I didn't as much. Right. So How I Met Your Mother is down the list. It got beat by almost whoever was in there. If it was between How I Met Your Mother and Friends, who moves on to the next round? Friends. I think so too. Yeah. And that's me saying that after only watching a single episode, the first episode of How I Met Your Mother. It, I'm sure it got better. Everything gets better. <laughs> True. But it set me up enough with who the characters were and the vibe of the whole thing that I'm just like, this is not... And maybe How I Met Your Mother, like the whole the whole premise of the show is the, the dad, as a narrator, is talking to his children about how he met their mother. And even up to the last episode, it was like a weird gotcha, gotcha twist. And I didn't like that. It yeah. seemed like the whole thing is like, we are going to a point. We have an ending point. There's a, a crescendo to this story. And it seemed like I was being drugged along, not telling me the story. And they had zany antics, and the whole thing was kind of neat. There's really funny episodes of that show. But, like, as a whole, uh, Ted annoyed me. Barney was kind of fun. But if you watched the fun Barney on episode one, he was pretty much the exact same Barney in episode whatever, 100-something. And then they're like, okay, you're finally going to know how I met your mother. And it's like, uh -huh, no, you're not. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I saw that they're actually coming out with a, a sequel or a, something related to the How I Met Your Father. Hmm. And it's like a whole other show. Um, my parents, and they're probably listening to this. Mom, Dad. Hey, guys. They she was just here a minute ago. I yeah, said, hey, her. She was picking up one of my kids. Um, they really like Big Bang Theory. Okay, we got to talk about Big Bang Theory now because it's a very popular show. It is. Do you like that show? I do not. They've told me several times, you should watch this episode. It's about this thing. It's really funny. And I've tried a couple of times. I honestly think that it's not necessarily about the show concept or the actors. And I, and I guess I'm talking about Friends and How I Met Your Mother and Big Bang. There's something about that style of sitcom the traditional the, like the fake the live can't audience break the fourth wall yeah yeah the preset cameras within you know i don't know there's just something about that type of Formulaic. show formulaic doesn't really I, I totally watched it growing up i mean i, I loved full house i loved mm -hmm. you know like growing pains mm -hmm. uh, family matters family matters all those what was the one with uh michael j fox i can't think of the name the uh different troops no no although i did watch that a lot i like 
I don't know. I, I grew up watching Different Strokes, Webster, mm-hmm. um, Family Ties. That's the one. Of, all that. And it's the same format. Yeah. So maybe it's just me becoming a snob as I get older, whatever. But anyway, current shows of that format, I just can't seem to get into. Big Bang Theory is one of them. I thought it was fun. Uh, surprisingly, my dad really likes that show. Hmm. Uh, he had them all like saved on the TiVo. <laughs> TiVo. Uh, I didn't think it was bad. I don't know, but I wasn't scrambling to watch it. And like I said, they they seem pretty formulaic, and in their formulaic, it seems like let's change this one element of the equation, and let's put them in a zany like it's like a, a Mad Libs kind of thing. Hmm. They're like <laughs> that's probably how a lot of those shows are written. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a, a South Park episode that, like, is hating on Family Guy, and their thing is, like, it seems like their whole episode, they they were hating on him on the show, that uh, the pretext was that Family Guy was made up by manatees that were picking up balls with random words on them and putting them in order, and that's how they made a Family Guy oh. episode. They were, like, throwing shade. But I think, like, the the formulaic things, it's Wouldn't like, South let's Park be the reach, into the, reach into the bucket and grab two characters. There's plot a and grab two other characters they're on plot b and yeah. grab the last two characters and they just happen to be on plot c give me a give me a location location yeah uh okay nerd place give me nerd reference <laughs> that's that's what it seems like that show is yeah i can see that uh south park same thing i i mean it's not the same thing it's a totally different thing but for me the feeling is the same like i saw one episode <laughs> when it first came out and i'm like nope not my jam I was in middle school when South Park came out, so, like, the annoying little one-liners that they would say, everybody in the school would say. Yeah. And then they started to get very, uh, very deep in their, like, commentary and how political the show would get, like, in the satire. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think I put South Park in the same light that I put uh, John Oliver's show. That, like, you have an opinion about something, and it could be different than mine, and that's fine. But you fill it with so many just, like, obnoxious things that it takes away from the point you're trying to make. And I get it. It's like, it's a comedy show. They're trying to be funny. Hmm. But I would just like somebody's social commentary on a, on a situation that I don't know anything about. Like, they have an episode about uh, Scientology that's pretty good. But they would get them in trouble. And so the whole time they would have little things on there. They're like, please don't sue us or whatever from Scientology. And just, hmm. I don't know. The show, like, it, it got really debaucherous after, I, I think, pretty early. Yeah. I, say after <laughs> I was going to say like, after. It got pretty early. <laughs> but some of them weren't bad. And then I grew out of it because, I don't know, it, just, it stopped hitting. It's like, oh, you're going to do, like, a something crude and something gross just for a reaction rather than to drive the story along. Yeah. But one of my favorite moments in my whole life was when my very conservative father, who is probably watching, hey dad, he and I went to go watch the South Park movie. And oh man, it was it was fantastic. The movie itself, whatever, I could care less about the movie. My father's reaction to things in the movie because it is crude. Crude to like a crude to the degree that I was not allowed into that movie. Because it was rated R. The first movie I ever knew that I was, like, not allowed to go in unless I was 18. Hmm. And my brother, who was 18, and I think I was 15, like, he went to go buy two tickets. They wouldn't sell him two tickets. Everybody who had a ticket had to show ID. Whoa. The first time that has, like, ever happened, in my knowledge. And uh, so I didn't go see it. My brother went to see it, and I watched Wild Wild West (laughs) with Will Smith. And it, it sucked. It sucked real bad. So, like, my dad, for some reason, I don't know what happened in his mind, but my dad took me to watch this movie. I I just, like, was watching him the whole time. <laughs> and, ooh. So, one time when I was in college, my parents came to Savannah, and I don't remember why we went to see a movie, but we went to see a movie. And uh, didn't really know it was anything playing that was interesting. I'm like, oh, this one looks good. Let's just, it looks like an action movie. Let's go see this. Fight Club. Oh, nice. With my parents. <laughs> and so we got about, I don't know, 30 minutes into the movie. I'm like, we should leave, like, right now. And my parents are awesome. And they didn't say anything. They've never, you know, they're not like prudes or anything. And I, But I was so uncomfortable, probably more uncomfortable than I've been in most times of my life. But I still have never seen the second half of Fight Club. <laughs> or probably more than that. Because it was just like, I, we got to go right now. 
And they're like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I envision your parents being really cool about it. Oh, yeah. And then after we're going, huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I should ever watch that movie or not. It's not a bad movie. People love it, but. Never that has never like a it. cult-like following. Yeah. I mean, it was a good movie. It was a good movie for a lot of weird reasons. But, okay, so what we talked about older shows. We talked about some... What about Family Guy? Did you ever watch Family Guy? Because, I mean, it's... If you were in... If someone was into South Park, I assume Family Guy was a decent transition. But if you were not into South Park, I imagine it would be turned off by... Yeah. The adult... What about, like, adult comedy cartoons in general? Uh, I'm not opposed to that. But I think the there's something different about, like, adult focused things and things that are intentionally crass yeah and i think the crass thing is what i'm just not drawn to again not because i'm a prude not because of like i don't want to hear about grody things or nasty language or anything it's not that it's just like i don't want to spend my time there that's not something that you enjoy you're not something to right to seek yeah i don't think it's funny yeah. and so i don't want to yeah were you allowed um, to watch the simpsons growing up i was allowed to but i didn't same kind of reason. Hmm. Like, it just, it wasn't funny to me. It was just like, let's see how many buttons we can push. The buttons back then were very different than what the buttons are now yeah. as far as pushing on TV. They said, but hell, uh -oh. Yeah. Like, oh, that kid said a curse word. Yeah. That's really wild. And it just didn't, it wasn't funny to me, so I never spent any time there. I mean, I have seen episodes of it, but it I think The to. Simpsons uh, is like the king of the, the, like, inside joke, like, really quick like deep cut jokes that are really fast and i remember as a kid i, I wasn't allowed to watch it because bart said a curse word that one time <laughs> but even when i was allowed to watch it i remember thinking like it, there's so much going on here like there's so many characters and people would quote simpsons episodes and i was like what flash in the pan moment was that in their 13 or whatever season like library it seemed like i was i was not on board early yeah and then you just get further and further yeah. behind yep but even then like each episode complete could completely stand alone but it seemed like there was this inside joke that i was not a part of and i was like eh, well, yeah. i can watch the simpsons yeah. and be entertained hands down but yeah eh. I, I agree um i think that show is still being produced I wouldn't doubt it. It was like 30 seasons or something crazy. Yeah, it. Um, I kind of never got on board with it. I was never really interested in it. Uh, there were a few shows like that. Did you ever watch Futurama? I didn't get on board with Futurama because I wasn't really on board with The Simpsons a whole lot. And it's the it's made by Matt Groening and it's the exact same animation style. Yeah. So uh, I didn't get into it for that reason. It just seemed like a recycled concept even though the characters were different the whole plot was different it seemed recycled and it, for their their newest show that they came out with not too long ago like enchanted or just something disenchantment yeah just, yeah that same thing if i see the same style in a cartoon and i wasn't really keen on the original version of that cartoon like it turns me off from whatever the repeat thing is so i never really thought about this before that's actually a, a good point i just assumed that futurama was different enough in tone of the simpsons that they were different. I enjoyed Futurama. I didn't watch all of it, but when it was on, you know, we would watch it and it was very, very funny, but it didn't quite have the same crassness that I yeah. remembered from the Simpsons, but it's funny because they could have been a lot more alike than I realized. Mm -hmm. I just never gave the Simpsons a chance or they could have been different. I don't really know. They definitely had the similar visual style. Um, hmm. But that's happened to a show recently anyway i don't know yeah how, how long are we in oh 55 minutes wow talking about tv we have a pro and con we want to do one or we two had a big those. list last time we didn't get to them so let's see if there's any cool ones left in the list let us know if you're listening to this some tv shows that we haven't talked about We've got some really awesome ones you think are within you know the comedy realm or the any of the stuff we've talked about that we oh. didn't mention and if you like i like to make stuff we talked about Neil Patrick Harris being in How I Met Your Mother. Our good buddy Joel Telling got hmm. to do like a two-hour live stream with Neil Patrick Harris the other day because because Doogie was interested in 3D printing and found Joel on Twitter. And Joel did a fantastic job of like not only interviewing 
but like doing a live hands-on collaborative demonstration kind of education series with Neil Patrick Harris. That's pretty cool. He did a fantastic job. So go check out Joel's live stream. And I mean, if you want to watch the whole thing, great. Skim through it. The chemistry back and forth. Joel has a, a very awesome delivery style. Uh, he did great. And I'm super proud of him. And check this out. There's a bearskin rug out of oh, Lego. Oh, that's fun. So this, I'm still building, for anybody listening, I'm still building the uh, Lego blacksmith. And you made a little bearskin rug. Had a black Lego with a white. That's pretty cool. Anyway. All right. Pros and cons. Okay. Uh, this one is a callback to the beginning of our episode. Mm, from Brent. Uh, yeah. Oh. The the GIF, GIF argument. The argument's dumb, for one. It's yep. GIF. The end. Move on. Yep. Oh, all right. <laughs> that well, is my opinion. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't know. It's like if someone tells me how to pronounce a word, I can look it up in the dictionary and it'll tell me how to pronounce it. It seems to be a very like binary topic. It's either it's pronounced this or it's not pronounced that. So I don't, so I don't it's know one of those what the things debate that is. People have um, like a an example for why it should be this way based on the English language. On both sides. Your basis should not be the English language <laughs> for your rules or as to how something is pronounced. And I'm pretty sure that the original, like the person who created that format at one point said, well, I thought of it as being this way. And I don't know which way it then was. he gets to decide. But the point is, it doesn't matter because it's an acronym. Okay. Acronyms don't have a pronunciation. They're an acronym. So you can say it however you want. That's like if I said the FUBU is coming, you know? Hmm. The BAMSIS? Nobody's going to know that I meant FBI, but I said it. <laughs> the, the Phoebe? The Phoebe. Anyway, it's an acronym. Just the GIF. Just calling it that from <laughs> Yeah. On. But it's GIF? It's a hard G? And, I mean, I think it is. Just, I've always said it that way. But does, does the I'm wrong about tons of, of stuff, so who knows? GIF think it's a hard G? I don't know. Hmm. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> ready, for, ready for another? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Uh, Nashville-style hot chicken. Delicious. I'm not entirely sure that I've ever had it. You've had Royals. Is that what it is? Yeah. I mean, what makes it? Is it spicy? Is that what okay. makes it? Well, it's the seasoning it's, and how it's cooked. It's a piece of fried chicken okay. that is dunked in hot sauce, but it's not just hot sauce. It's the oil that the chicken was fried in that has been spiced to be hot. Because anything that is water-based, if you put the water-based stuff on your chicken, it's going to make soggy gross chicken. But if you put oil in it, it will maintain its crispiness. So you fry the chicken, dunk it in the fry oil that has been spicified, so now you have a piece of crispy, spicy fried chicken and not a piece of fried chicken with, like, squirted stuff on the top, which has water uh, in it, which will make your chicken soggy. Huh. Well, I cannot really think of what that tastes like, so. Spicy like, chicken. Crispy, I like, spicy chicken. I like spicy chicken, chicken though, it. so. Sure. Pro? Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right. I lost my place. Let's see. We're talking about Publix and self-checkout. Oh, that's uh, we beat self checkout to death. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was some really interesting feedback on. We get feedback on all this stuff on Discord, so our Maker Alliance people uh, get to hang out on Discord, and there's been a lot of funny back and forth about the self checkout thing. Mm-hmm. And they brought up Publix and how the people, the cashiers at Publix, and as soon as they said this, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about Publix. The cashiers at Publix are really good, and if I went to Publix and I had the choice between going to a cashier and a self-checkout, which I don't even know if they do self-checkout, I would go to a cashier. That's great. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, was like, I would not. The Publix that came to our town smelled like a baby poop diaper, oh. so it turned me off from going there, and then I'm like, I know that it has superior like offerings as you know, from Walmart or wherever, and like, that's great. But I remember the one in our town. It smells like poop. It smells like baby poop. <laughs> and I still don't like that smell. I, I don't think you'll ever get to a point where you like that smell. No. So. Which makes me not want to be in the store, which makes me absolutely not care that their people are nice. Mm. Yeah. But I think, I don't know if they have self-checkout. I, I don't think they do. I've never seen it. Huh. I've never noticed. So your lesson for life is it doesn't matter how nice you are if you still smell like poop. Yeah. If, you're a, if your establishment <laughs> smells like baby poop, I'm out of there with the quickness. Hurry it up. Where's Aldi? All right, one more. Mm. One got? more. Uh, this is from Josh uh, wearing socks to bed. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no. No. The only time I can remember wearing socks to bed is, like, when I was 
young and I got sick and I was just so cold. You know, it was like mm-hmm. I had a fever or whatever. But other than that, I feel like, because I sleep with my feet out from underneath the covers most of the time. Do like, you feel like you're being that, smothered with your feet under your No, feet? no, no. That just kind of helps me regulate temperature, hmm. you know, because you lose temperature out of your hands and feet and face. And uh, I, so instead, I still get the coziness of being snuggled up, covered, but then I stick my feet out the side to kind of yep. not get too hot. So wearing socks would completely defeat that purpose. So if my wife is listening to this, I have a weird thing about socks that <laughs> I would prefer just not to wear socks. I don't know. I'm, I'm a guy from Florida. But if I have socks on and I like take my shoes off because I'm at home and I'm walking around and I have my socks and I like sit on the couch, I feel like my feet are in a straight jacket or they're too hot or I'm just uncomfortable. But if I take my sock and just get it off my heel and it's like covering my toes, (laughs) but not on my heel, huh? I am completely comfortable. It is like the perfect weird balance of like, I don't want my my toes to be chilly where I would necessitate an entire blanket, but then I don't want my feet to feel constricted. So I just like take my foot and I flick my sock off my heel so that it's off. Like if you're gonna take like a, a, a cup and put it on your toes. I feel like there's some sort of an analog there for like a, you got a sweater and a t-shirt and a tank top. I feel like there's some like sure. full, like long sock, short sock, sock like, up to the like corner a of your ankle. sock. <laughs> It's yeah. like a, the a tank- cabriolet sock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the tank top sock. <laughs> yeah, but it bugs me. And so she'll like walk past and I just have like my weird little beanie <laughs> sock on, on my foot. <laughs> and she giggles at me and I don't know. It's, it's just, a doily sock. <laughs> yeah, it's comfortable. It's called fashion. <laughs> <laughs> oh No, dicky, Not a doily. It's a dicky. You know how dickies are like a turtleneck that just goes from like right here? You oh, put is that what that is? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up. I don't know about you guys. Um, big thanks to our members of our Maker Alliance for the pros and cons, but also for hanging out on Discord, all the other awesome stuff that they do. If you want to join that crew, go over to I like to make stuff.com slash join. You get like discounts on plans. But everybody this. just got, if you are a Maker Alliance member and you were listening to this, you just got a coupon code for a free set of plans of your choice because we haven't put out plans in a while there you go somebody mentioned something about it i felt bad so everybody gets a free coupon code go check patreon or go check your youtube community tab and there's a coupon code waiting for you go build whatever you want to build share it with us on social media at i like to make stuff or at josh underscore make stuff and so we can pass it around yes do that there's a bunch of stuff over there um but ultimately it's a community of people that get to hang out they have lots of awesome conversation on and offline and the hangout is next week yeah jump on in if you want uh we do a google hangout for people of a certain level and up the second tuesday of every month so that's coming up next week it's always a good time and we sometimes forget to tell people ahead of time in a timely manner which are usually pretty good it's usually (laughs) like day before yeah it's it's always day before so some people who may not get the notification in a timely manner if you're listening to this now hopefully this should be out before (laughs) next tuesday (laughs) um Maybe you'll get the email before you get the notification that the podcast is ready. But come hang out. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's it. You guys got anything else? I don't. I'm good. Cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.